Hello AFAM from Riga, Latvia. I'm Ashley and this is Josh. Welcome to our channel. We sold everything to travel the world and now we want to share with you the way away. So subscribe down below for more adventures. Let's go. All right, today, as you can see, we are practically Rushing. running. <laughs> we are going to a Riga, Latvia city walking tour, a yeah. free one, and we're gonna share that with you. We decided to walk because it saves money and now we're late, so. We've been walking for 30 minutes and yep. we're late already. Uh, it's in this park right over here. Okay, good. Let's just cut across. There are, just in time. Yeah, there are a lot of tours in Riga. I chose this one because it's a cultural tour is what it's called. It's two and a half hours and I'm not sure um, if we're actually gonna go in the downtown area because there were tours to do that but I didn't choose that because I wanted to see like what the outside areas were like. In the description it said seeing why the locals like it here. Oh perfect. So yeah I wanted to get outside of like the touristic type of tour. century, Riga was surrounded by high defense walls, medieval defense walls, ramparts, defense walls, defense line. Okay, already we've been learning so much about Latvian culture and history. Until a couple hundred years ago, they were essentially a surf nat nation, a nation of serfs, servants essentially. People owned them. And so she was talking about how the Latvian identity isn't super strong. They're still finding it and developing it. Now, recently they've been a country in the European Union for a long time, and even before then, World War I, World War II, the Russian invasion, they were Latvia. But it's still an interesting thing that, to this day, they're, uh, they're figuring out identity and culture. Here in Riga, there's this famous architect. His name is Eisenstein. His architecture is so cool. He uses faces. Peacocks is one of his favorite things to use. And he only made 15 houses here in Riga, which is not very many here in, like as an architect to only do 15 things <laughs> as your career. But he was a really difficult man to get along with. So when building his buildings, as the person who hired him, you didn't want to make him mad because he will build things on the front of the face of your house showing like how terrible you are. Yeah, or how <laughs> cool so, you are. Yeah, or how cool you are. So you really wanted to be cool. She said that he only built for people in his inner circle. So really cool. We're gonna see a few more of his houses, but they're like so ornate and different. I'm also realizing that like, the USSR is totally different from Russia. I mean, USSR was based in Russia, and people will often interchange them, but they are technically different. No, but I totally learned they just are different. I didn't ever know that. Oh, really? I just always thought that it was the same thing. Like she was saying that um, when uh, Russia came in, that they pretty much just shipped Russians here so that the language would change into Russian, like they would take away the Latvian culture and stuff, and that like they would just move them pretty much into people's houses. Like they had this thing where families owned one room in the apartment, and they just pretty much lived in community because they were trying to get rid of the Latvian culture. It was like a soft ethnic cleansing. That's, that's yeah, so crazy to me. I, I never, I, I just, I'm learning so much. <laughs> The history like never meant anything to me, you know? It wasn't that long ago, yeah. that's also freaky. Well, our, our biggest introduction to um, like the USSR was just be like, you know, KGB spies and that's like, from movies, movies and stuff, that's yeah. all we know. <laughs> this statue is called Sam and he's part of an exhibition called Fast Crew. There are more than 60% Latvians as ethnicity and they speak Latvian language. Then in Riga there are only 44% Latvians. Latvians are still largest ethnicity in Riga. Next largest ethnicity in Riga are Russians. They are 38% and the rest is mixed. We have 1% this, 1% that, half percent someone else. Very, very mixed population. 
That building right there is an old part of the city's defense wall. There's a really funny story around it. It wasn't used for centuries because of the way that wars changed, essentially, different different siege techniques. Basically, birds moved into it, and it was, it was lived in by a bunch of pigeons for I, I, over a hundred years or more. And eventually, a students' union came to the city council and said, hey, can we use this? And they're like, sure, go ahead, it's fine. So the students cleaned up all the pigeon poo, sold it for fertilizer, and that gave them all the money that they needed to renovate it and turn it into like, whatever their use was. I don't know what that was. I think that's hilarious that they sold all the pigeon poop to help fund the, uh, <laughs> the restoration. And what is this? went all surrounding uh, old town just behind the defense wall and it was called Alarm Street so it wasn't allowed to live here and uh, during the siege uh, city defenders ran all around the city on this street <laughs> The tour is over and we've come to a place called Apsara Tea House. This was actually suggested by one of you Wayfam. And so Tony, if you're watching, thank you for the recommendation. We've actually come with a few people from the tour and we're just gonna hang out, have some tea, some biscuits or whatever else they have here. I'm actually pretty hungry, so we may go somewhere else afterwards, but we're gonna enjoy it while we can. Come to a tea house in a park. Um, we are with our new friends that we met on our tour. I don't even know their names yet. So we're, we'll work on <laughs> we're, we're gonna try some tea. We've been sniffing all these awesome teas that they have available here and they have a bunch of little cookies. We're gonna stuff ourselves with some dessert and yeah call it good. Our friend Tony suggested this place to us thtravel.com. He has a blog and he does a lot of food and delicious things so definitely go check him out. So but now we have to find out which burrito, tea is yeah. which. I don't know. It's not my burrito. Who are the burrito? You got a burrito? <laughs> I didn't see that on the menu. We waited out the rain in the beautiful tea house. It was delicious. We enjoyed some cake and some yummy tea, warmed ourselves up, and now we're headed to eat some lunch. I watched this couple. They're called Karenate. They were in one of our previous videos, but they suggested this place. They went to lunch um, and got some dumplings. You choose as many things as you want and you weigh it. So we're going to head over there, get some lunch. This is a really good example of where a vlog has helped us find a fun place to go and have something to eat. And we're still with our friends. I did find out their names, um, Alex and Kevin. <laughs> They've been awesome. We're just hanging out with them right now, which is great. The trumpets is a serious one. Yeah, please, no I have no idea what kind of food this is um, at all. I just pick things that look good. Well, they're dumplings. Well, uh, yeah, I got potatoes, some weird looking... Cheese. Is it cheese? Oh, I thought it was pasta, okay. I have a good signature. Flavors are good. It tastes really good, a lot better than the um, Chinese we had last night. Yes. <laughs> I won't be finishing that, it is not Iran. It tastes like watery sour cream. If you like sour cream, this... <laughs> come to Latvia. Come to, come to Latvia. Come to this restaurant and get whatever the heck that is. It was cheap, so I don't mind not drinking it. We finished eating. It was about six euro for both of our bowls, which is really, really cheap and um, affordable. And I really liked it. Like, I love dumplings. Easy to eat. I would say definitely get the sauces to go on top. I learned that from Karen Nate, and I did it, and I was thankful I did. Now we're going to go to a bar and have a few drinks with our new friends. I'm probably gonna butcher this, but we are at Canepes Cultura Centres. 
so this place is actually really neat. They're playing groovy music, as you would say, and it's got a cool atmosphere. We're sitting outside, it just rained. We wipe out the seats. It's just got a cool, chill vibe. And if you want good beer, this is the place to come. I have a delightful Estonian IPA Latvian. draft. Dang it. <laughs> I have a delightful Latvian draft IPA that was three and a half euro. Not bad. 30 at night and we're finally getting dinner. We decided to go with our delicious favorite cheapish meal. <laughs> cheapish. We're gonna get some kebabs and onion rings. We went all out. <laughs> yeah! So eight euro for a large bunch of medium rings and a medium kebab. Not bad for a kebab. It is cheaper here in um, Latvia, but still kind of expensive. Yeah, I mean we're in city center near the center. It's expensive. Unfortunately, our, where our Airbnb is, there's not a ton around there. Mm -mm. So we're just eating while we can. Mm -hmm. yep. We are back home now. Had an amazing time. Totally awesome time today in Riga with the tour and with friends that we randomly picked up from the tour. Ashley, what are you actually doing over here? I'm um, trying to find uh, the dishwasher. Oh, you're doing the dishes. Oh, nice. So, Wei fam, I hope we encourage you to get out there and travel today. Ashley, have anything to say to the, the fine people? Well, I want to just say, like, today we weren't planning on hanging out with two no. guys that we just randomly met That's on the awesome. tour, but I'm glad that we allowed ourselves to do that. Like, we did, this yeah. video might be a little, like, I don't know, disconnected in a way. Yeah. But it was because we were enjoying and hanging out with two awesome guys that we had just met. Yeah. And it's harder to film, you know, when you're with people that you just met. Like we had planned, we had planned other things or at least had ideas for other uh -huh. things. But when we started hanging out with these guys, we're like, eh, let's just have fun. Yeah. I think that it's important to be flexible while you're traveling and if you meet cool people. Allow yourself to hang out with them and get to know them a bit. For sure. So, thank you so much to Kevin and Alex for hanging out with us today. It was so nice meeting you. Mm -hmm. And we like the tour. We did put it down below. It is full of information. So if you like yes. information, then the tour is good. A really hard tour to film. <laughs> but like we loved it and the guys we were with loved it. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, it was good um, if you like information and you yeah. want to come and learn totally. about the city. We're back in our Airbnb now. Once again, we did yesterday a little tour when we came in, but this place is awesome. We have a full kitchen. Ashley's doing dishes and a dishwasher. <laughs> we could probably do some laundry uh, later. So if you want to come to this Airbnb in Riga, definitely check out the link in the description down below. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Good night.